you're now watching All About the Game, presented by Mike Drop Sports. Welcome back to All About the Game. I'm your host, Jason, and today we're breaking down the Pittsburgh Steelers schedule for this season, and we're going to give our wins and loss prediction, and we're going to predict just how far we think this team can make it in this season, and what kind of a... Um, are we going to be expecting a special season, a shitty season? Well, you'll just have to watch the video to find out. We're going to break the schedule down, and we're going to talk about where we think they're going to win, where they're going to lose, and let's just dive right into it, guys. So today, we're talking about week one. Week one versus the San Francisco 49ers. The Niners are coming into town. Um, Christian McCaffrey, don't know who the quarterback will be, maybe Purdy, maybe Lance, um, Nick Bosa and company. They're coming into town. However, the Steelers are really wa riding a wave, I think, off of last season's 7-2 and two finish down the stretch. Kenny Pickett really started to take control of the offense, started making it more of his own. And I think now that we're moving into Kenny's second season, he's going to have the ability to do a little bit more. And I think that's just going to overwhelm the 49ers that are coming from a long road trip. And uh, I think the Steelers are going to have their number here. And I think the Steelers are going to catch a W. And that'll take them to 1-0. and So let's move into their next opponent. Oh, just to mention, guys, we're not going to break every game down in depth. It would be about a two-hour video. However, we're going to break it down a little bit. But um, let's move into our second game. This will be game number two. This has the Cleveland Browns coming into Pittsburgh looking to get a W in the division. However, the Steelers still riding that wave from that last year's finish, just put a smack down on the Browns and really embarrass those Browns fans and send them back on the turnpike a loser, as Joey Porter once said. So we have the Steelers moving into week three at 2-0. and This is a good start for the Steelers. They're flying high. And now they're going out to Las Vegas, playing in Sin City, in the Death Star. But I have the Steelers coming back down to earth in this game and taking an L. I know some of you may say the Raiders aren't very good, blah, blah, blah. But sometimes the Steelers lay an egg against uh, inferior opponents. And I've seen this for years and years and years. And uh, I just think this is where they catch that first L in the season, bringing their record to 2-1. and one. Now we move down to te uh, Houston. The Steelers go down to play the Texans in Houston, and I like the Steelers bouncing back here and getting a nice W. This will bring them up to 3-1. and one. This gets the Steelers a great start, which they haven't really had here in the last couple seasons, a great solid start. And I think Kenny Pickett and company come out, get this, get this fresh start, get, get the ball rolling for this team. So I have the Steelers winning in Texas, in Texas against the Houston Texans, and that's a young up-and-coming team down there. So I'm not saying it's not impossible for them to lay an egg against a young team, and maybe if they're flying high. But however, I think the Steelers are just going to bounce back after a loss in Las Vegas and get that W to make them 3-1. and So now let's move into the fifth game of the season. And this opponent is another divisional foe. And this brings in the uh, Baltimore Ravens. They're coming to Pittsburgh. The Ravens come in, and I think they really uh, put a hurt on the Steelers here. Coming off that long road trip, I think the Steelers take another L here, bringing their record to three and two. They're not, uh, you know, they're not being an overwhelming favorite in games right now during the season. They're, they're just starting to find their footing. However, I think they take a hard, tough loss to the Baltimore Ravens. And that brings them again, like I said, to three and two. Let's move into week six. Now you have the Steelers. Just let's, before we move on, the Steelers now are one and one in the division. Remember that, okay, guys? So one and one in the division. That will play a role in the probably playoff, seat, playoff seedings, win in the division, all that stuff. So um, one and one in the division so far. Now we're going to move into the next game. That's going to be the Rams. The Steelers got to take the road trip out to uh, L.A., play the Rams. Long road trip, but I think the Steelers win that ball game. That brings them to four and two against the Rams. So we have them at four and two right now, sitting pretty in a division at a one and one record. They're really starting to crank up here. And I think the Rams are just going to be outgunned in this game. And I think the Steelers are going to be able to pull that out, even though it's a long road trip. And traditionally that plays tough for Pittsburgh. However, I think they find a way to win that game and come out of there a winner. Let's move into the next game. Now, this game, I don't like a matchup for the Steelers. They always play shitty against this team, and that is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, and company come into town, into Pittsburgh, 
And I think they're going to put the ass whooping on Kenny Pickett and company. I think it's going to be a bad game for the Steelers. It usually is for some reason. I'm not sure why. However, I think they take that loss, bringing their record to four and three. So they're just hovering right now, in my eyes, above above 500. But this is going to be a tough loss. And this is going to be a wake-up call for the Pittsburgh Steelers, considering I think Jacksonville's going to be a playoff team. And I think Doug Peterson has that team flying high and ready to go. And I just think this is going to be one of those losses that really gets that team a, a, a big slap in the face, a big wake up call. And then we have the Titans coming into town, guys. And Tennessee, I feel like the Steelers usually play that club good, even with Derrick Henry. We'll see who their quarterback is. Is it going to be the young guy, Will Levis? Is it going to be uh, Ryan Tannehill? They now have the services of DeAndre Hopkins, all that stuff. So, This could be a tough game, but I think the Steelers win that game, bounce back after a tough loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars, bringing the record to five and three. This is where, though, this win right here against the Titans, this is where I think the Steelers go on one of those little win streaks here, and they start ripping some off to get some ground, gain some ground in the division, gain some ground in the AFC standings, and I think this is what the Steelers needed when they lost to that Jack, to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think this is where they got that slap in the face and they start ripping those wins off. So let's move on to the next game. The Green Bay Packers come into town. This is the third straight home game at Akershire Stadium, and I like the Steelers. They're starting to roll. Jordan Love gets sent home back to Wisconsin with a loss. JJ uh, or uh, TJ Watt gives that that Wisconsin that hometown at home city uh, home state loss to uh, his, his home state team. So he sends them packing and gets them back on the road with a, a bit with a big L. And we'll just see what Jordan Love's probably made of by then. So let's move on down to the Steelers versus the Browns now. This is where the Steelers are sitting at six and three coming into this Browns game. They had already beat the Browns once this season. They're at sitting at six and three. Division is one and one. They're looking good. And I think the Steelers go in and they sweep the Cleveland Browns and they get another W against the Cleveland Browns. And I just think it's going to happen for some reason. It's one of those seasons that that they do. They always play well against those Ohio teams. Yes, they have some stumbling, um, some hurdles sometimes, and they stumble sometimes. However, I think the Steelers get this W against the Cleveland Browns. And that's going to bring their record to 7-3. and Pittsburgh's flying high right now, guys, and they're starting to really go. And now let's move them on. They go right again to the next week. They got to travel to Cincinnati and play another divisional opponent. And that is the Cincinnati Bengals. But I like the Steelers to win this, to move the two and one in the division. This brings the Pittsburgh Steelers probably in leading the division right now at two and one or tied for the division lead at this juncture of the of the season. And I like the Steelers for one reason. I felt like they really came through last season, even being uh, guided by Mitchell Trubisky last year. I felt like the defense really got up for that game. And I felt like it's it's becoming one of the good rivalries again. The Bengals, since they're better and they're good versus the Steelers, I feel like it's becoming uh, a Steelers-Ravens type feel. So I think the Steelers stay up riding high for that game and they get a W against Joe Burrow. And that will bring their record to 8-3. and three. Now let's say, hey, we're doing pretty well here. We're tied for the division lead. We got some things moving. Now here comes the Carol, or excuse me, the Cardinals from Arizona. They're going to be coming into Ackershore Stadium after two rough home games. And I like the Steelers to beat the Cardinals because I think the Cardinals have nothing. And I think Kyler Murray is subpar. I don't think he's a franchise guy. Do I think he's a hell of an athlete? Absolutely. Can he throw the football? Absolutely. I just don't think that he's the guy. I just I just don't. I don't think he he's a leader of men down there. I just don't think it's working out. And we're going to see that when the Steelers put a total beat down on the Arizona Cardinals at Akershire Stadium. Moving the record to 9-3. and three, People are going to start to be talking about these guys. They're going to be like, oh, the Steelers for real? Are they pretenders or contenders? I think they're going to be uh, contenders here, and they're going to keep on moving. So I have the Patriots coming into town yet again, and I think the Patriots lay an egg here, and the Steelers finally get a win against their arch nemesis, Bill Belichick. Mike Tomlin sometimes has trouble with uh, his getting his teams going here against Bill Belichick, but I think Mike Tomlin finds the way to win this game, moving the Steelers' record to 10-3 and three here. The Steelers are going to be looking good. 
They're going to be sitting high in the division, and I think they finally get that win, get over that hurdle of beating the Patriots on a consistent basis now. So I think the Steelers get that W, moving the record again to 10-3. and three. Now the Steelers travel to Indianapolis for the second straight season, and I like the Steelers to totally rip off a big win against the Colts, moving them to 10-3. and three. It's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think the Colts are, are armed up right now enough to beat the Steelers. I, I think Anthony Richardson will be starting, but I just think that they just don't have all the pieces to the puzzle put together just yet. But I think they will be good in the future with Anthony Richardson. I just don't think this will be their time. And I think Kenny Pickett takes control of that game, throws for a bunch. Um, Najee and, and uh, Jalen Warren really get going. And I think this is a, a big W for the Pittsburgh Steelers yet again for the second straight year in Indianapolis. That moves their record to 11-3. So they are really moving here, guys. Now let's move on to the Cincinnati Bengals coming into Pittsburgh. I think the Steelers come back down to earth here with a loss, a hard-fought loss. This is going to be a three-point, four-point game, and it's going to be down to the last minutes. But I think the Bengals pull it off. Joe Burrow has a big game, but I think Kenny Pickett plays well. I just think they finally come back down to earth and lose a ball game here, moving their record to 11-4, and four, very respectable. That makes them, though, 2-2 two and two in the division which might not, that might be putting them out of second place right now because the Bengals should be beating up on everybody else. I just don't like them against the Steelers as much. So they split the season series with the Steelers, a one and one split. The Steelers do have two wins against the Browns, according to our predictions here. So that brings them to three and two. Yeah, three and two in the division or yeah, three. Let's count it up, guys, just to make sure. The Browns, we got to win. That's two. So they sweep the Browns. They beat the Bengals once. Then they lose to the uh, Ravens. That's two losses. Yes, three and two. Okay, so we have them at three and two right now. So I just wanted to make sure we don't mess that up in our numbers here. So now we have them moving out to the West Coast on a super long road trip to Seattle, one of the furthest they can go, if not the furthest uh, road trip that they can take. Uh, and they go up to Seattle, and I think Geno Smith explodes on this team, and I think the Steelers lose that game. That's going to bring them to 11-5. and five. And then the Pittsburgh Steelers come back home with the season finale, finale on the line. It's a divisional game. The Pittsburgh Steelers, oh, excuse me, they're going back to Baltimore. Sorry about that. They're going to Baltimore. This is a divisional game. And I think the Steelers find a way to get back on track right before the playoffs and get a W. And I think that that's going to be where you have Lamar Jackson probably out with an injury or not playing then, you know. So I really feel that that's where the Steelers will definitely get a W there after losing a hard-fought game there earlier in the season to the Ravens when they had Lamar Jackson. But I feel that it's probably going to be the time that Lamar's usually out. It seems to be a tradition for them that he's not uh, on the field during that time. So I have the Steelers winning that. So we have them finishing, guys, at 12 and 5. And I like them to get through the playoffs here a good, a good, a good ways. I like them to make it several weeks or a couple weeks in the playoffs here. So the Steelers finishing 12 and 5, that would give them a record of what? 4 and 2 in the division. And I think that might be good enough to be tied for the division lead. So we're going to be going into tiebreakers and stuff. And I think it's going to be with the Bengals. So we're going to have to see. Uh, who uh, has a little bit of a better record, first of all, uh, all that shit, all those tiebreakers, however they all do them, however they break down, we're going to have to see. So we'll just say that the Steelers have a pretty good chance, I think, of winning this division this season. And I think it's going to come down to the last week and some tiebreakers versus the Bengals just to uh, see where they get, what, what seed they become in the playoffs. So let's just say that they do win the division. I think the Steelers get going with that final win in the regular season and ride some momentum there. And I think the Steelers end up losing in the in the AFC Championship game. I'm not sure to who. It's either going to be the Chiefs because of the seeding, the way the seeding will work out, but that's going to depend on whether they win that division or not. So I think it's either going to be the Chiefs or somebody like the Bills. So I think the Steelers end up losing, but I think during this time they end up seeing Cincinnati again in the playoffs for the third straight or for the third game of the season. I think the Steelers give the, the Bengals a heartbreak during the playoffs and knock them out. I just think that that's how it's going to work for some reason. So 
I have the Steelers 12 and 5 in the regular season. I have the Steelers losing in the AFC Championship game, not quite getting over that hump of that Super Bowl to get in that Super Bowl. And I think it's going to be a heartbreaker, but I think it's going to be a great season. And I think it's going to be really fun for everybody to watch. So uh, keep looking forward to uh, more videos here from Mike Drop Sports. I want to just give you guys our predictions and get them out there. And let's see if we have to eat crow or if we're pretty accurate here. Only time will tell. So let's just uh, let's pray that I'm correct and not wrong. <laughs> but, but I want you guys to put your season predictions in the comments. I want you guys to give us what you think is going to happen. Break it down. Go as far as you would like. You know, tell us what they'll do in the playoffs. You know, all that kind of stuff. So let us know what your predictions are. Uh, this We give you ours, 12 and 5, losing in the AFC Championship game. And this is all contingent on health, guys definitely is your team remaining healthy um are you losing big key guys like we did last season where tj watt was out for the majority of the season um things like that those those things you can't control could drastically change all this is kenny pickett healthy are we flying with mitchell trubisky um are we down to mason rudolph you never know what can happen during an nfl season so these are just predictions on paper what i think it looks like on paper however I just, we just don't know some of the factors and it could be crazy. But this, if everything goes according to plan, I think this is where the Steelers end up. As long as Mike Tomlin can keep his team together, which he usually does. He's a phenomenal coach and one of the most uh, 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 player friendly, I would say. I wouldn't call him a player's coach, but player friendly kind of deal to where he keeps these guys in line. However, they respect him pretty good, but they, um, they definitely, uh, they definitely like him. They definitely want to play for him. So he's good at keeping everything together. And I like that about Mike Tomlin and people want to play for Mike. So I think this season's going to end up being a good one, guys. So I just want to wrap this video up and I want to say thank you for watching. I appreciate it. You making it through the whole way to the end for our uh, season prediction. And I want to remind you to like the videos, comment your stuff, what your prediction is, comment anything you would like. And, uh, we will see you on the next one here, and uh, I want you guys to subscribe. If you're not subscribed, I feel like we got a lot of viewers that aren't subscribed, but just go ahead and feel free. Hit the like button. It's, even if you're not signed up for YouTube, it's easy to do. Put an email in, sign yourself up. That way you can comment. That way you can uh, like and uh, subscribe the channel. So until next time, keep on watching Mike Drub Sports, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.